So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. This is Jillian with Jilly Juice. And finally I've processed in my head, I'm not reeling anymore, that my book is released. And I'm glad that it's only paperback. Um, it will be on Amazon as soon as Amazon and Barnes and Noble, if they do like a paperback, only paperback, well, they have paperback versions, I'm sure. It, it, it will be released in other global outlets once the book is approved by those entities. And then they will be available on Amazon. So, or it will be available on Amazon. But right now it's through Lulu and uh, Lulu is a good company. They're just going through some changes right now. But um, so yeah, so the, I finally processed the book is released. So that book, The Evolution of the Jilly Juice Protocol, actually is a written account of my evolution at the time when I actually changed the protocol. Okay. And then this next book that I'm working on, that's going to go into more of details in words and meaning, and then how words, meaning, and parts of speech have created these perceptions that pain is bad in our society, and how the words, meanings, and parts of speech have created the perception that people should die. Okay? Because we, uh, before the J-Juice, and some people who are not on J-Juice, are still under the impression that people should die at some point. And that's a hard, it's a hard uh, <clears throat> uh, belief system to penetrate because it's been so ingrained in all of us ever since we were born. Because the very nature of reproduction is because somebody, you know, wants to carry on their legacy because they have <clears throat> an expectation that they're going to die at some point in the future. And so, so now, with the Jilly Juice, we are exploring and seeing that death at the macro level, as far as our body, mind, and spirit, doesn't have to actually happen. It may happen on the micro level when we are going through different microbiomes and we have to adjust to our surroundings, but that's a very quick and very easily um, situation that a person can overcome. But if, you, if a person has a harder time adapting, then death is more imminent on the macro level versus the micro level. I mean, it happens on the micro level too, but then it happens actually on the macro level. So anyways, so I wrote this as a lead into just like marketing my book, which is life and death do have distinct definitions and there are facts that support what life as well as death is, okay? Uh, we live in a society where we have recategorized the facts of life and death and turn them into something debatable, a perception, okay? We do this to justify creating problems or looking for problem, problems or perceiving something as a problem so then somebody can sell us a perceived solution relative to the expectation. When there is a whole lot more money involved, a whole lot of money involved, like millions and millions and billions of dollars made in a very short amount of time, a person is being sold a perception of what life and death are. <clears throat> when the perception of life is working at 50% capacity, and you know people in your life that are working at 50%, they're, they're either retired, so they can't go to work every single day and bring in that, that money, they're at home living, but they're not living at the capacity that they lived when they were younger, okay? So they're, I would say, you know, perceptively, it would be maybe 50%, all right? So when the perception of life is working at 50% capacity, this is how you could sell many people into accepting remedies, operations, amputations, which take them down notch by notch by notch with the attempt to have you, no, have you not feel any pain on the way out, but then they characterize that as that's your life, that's life. So when the perception of life is accepting death as the ine inevitable, this is another way to sell people into a belief system that will inevitably translate into commodifying your body parts. Then you start selling off your body parts one by one. You're buying someone's remedy, buying their solution, their supplements, their pills, their procedures, their whatever, and you are not only disintegrating and your body is going to the wayside, just you know, disintegrating, but you're also taking your hard-earned money and you're giving it away to somebody else 
who is capitalizing on your death process. Okay, so let's really look at what life and death mean. But, you know, the actual meaning. Okay, life is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. So your body is self-sustaining. You got to give it what it needs to keep it going. And the reason why people are dying from cancer disease and chronic illness is because they are uh, they're not giving their body what it needs. They're not self-sustainable. They're going through what you call is a, is a disintegration process. However, let's go back to the life, you know, again. Life is a self-sustaining, is a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. So the ability to adapt to your surroundings, the ability to adapt to the microbiome, the different microbiomes that are out there, that is life. When the body is disintegrating very slowly or extremely fast relative to the chemistry you're applying to it, that is the disintegration death process. However, there's an actual definition. The best definition of death is the event that separates the process of dying from the process of disintegration. Okay, And the proper criterion of death in human beings is the permanent cessation of the circulation of blood. Okay. So it's an event. So the event is when you have a heart attack and you die because there, you don't have enough minerals and enough nutrients in the body to carry that blood through to get the oxygen to the brain, that's the permanent cessation of the blood circulation. And that is the actual death. Okay? Then there is a process of death called disintegration, dying, and we have... Our society and all the different religions and belief systems have then characterized the dying death process as life, okay? When somebody isn't able to adapt to their surroundings and they have cancer disease and chronic illness and they're taking on these remedies and concoctions and, and pills and amputations and all these different things, they're not living. That's not life. They're not evolving. They're dying. They're disintegrating. So th that's one of the biggest deceptions out there. Through college, okay, through um, and that's why they're pushing college on everybody right now. That's why they're saying, "Oh yes, we want we want equality." So we're going to push college on people and brainwash them into thinking that death is okay. That right there is a genocide. The educational system, when they're pushing something such as as academia, where death is accepted, where remedies and all these different antibiotics and things that aren't going to work on a long term basis, when they're pushing that on the people. And telling them it's acceptable to die. Just give us your minerals for the short amount of time that you're here. That is an actual genocide. But it's dressed up as, oh, well, we, you know, we didn't give you this, this uh, access to be able to compete on an equal level. But now we will. And then we have the COVID. And then we have type A and type O blood types. And type A is more susceptible to complications of COVID. And type O, you're, you're more protection. And then we have all of these uh, political race relations and it's, it's, you know, it's like equally uh, the Georgia Guidestones, which isn't horrible, but equally both races are being destroyed when you think about it because of the fact that we're teaching death is something that is acceptable and that, that life is very fleeting and very short and that uh, and, and to and to ignore that we have this virus and and not promote something that is life sustaining on a universal level. OK, and so this is where when 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 we when we were living from perception, when perception and context rules the world, this is where death and chaos come from, because. When, 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 you know, when we have a perception of what life and death is and not look at the actual definition, and when you look at the actual definition, it's very black and white, then people will think that taking all these concoctions and doing all these diets and doing all these things that's destroying their culture and their people, they're going to think that that is what life is, and it's not. That is the disintegration process. I mean, when, when we are taking things that are actually not helping us on a long-term basis, we are advocating our own destruction. And that's why we have to understand uh, the medical holistic system is they have a perception on life. They, they're not dealing with facts. 
because when when there's a when when when, when somebody is characterizing a problem and they have a solution it's all perception you're not built dealing with facts you're dealing with someone's perception of what life is so then you have to look at the chemistry of what it is that you're taking into your body and if the chemistry that what you're taking into your body is only okay for some people but not everybody then what you're dealing with is no different than what the FDA says okay well we will approve this drug because it won't kill you right off the bat but it'll kill you slowly. You'll disintegrate slowly. So we're going to prove it because you'll have more of a chance of maybe five years of life versus two years. Okay. Which isn't really the greatest odds for some people. So, so that's what I'm saying is that that's why when you, when you look at what a life sustaining protocol is, it doesn't discriminate. Jelly juice doesn't discriminate. Everybody does it. When someone has a perception that jelly juice doesn't work, because they're in pain, that's exactly, it's working. When someone's in pain doing jelly juice, they're bringing up predispositions, it actually is working. But their perception that pain is something that is, is deadly and bad, then it confirms their belief system, so that's a perception. But in actuality, you know, when you ask somebody, you know, prove me that jelly juice doesn't work, and then they say, well, I drank it and I felt all this stuff, then that actually confirms both of our belief systems so everybody wins that's my whole point when 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 you want to debate somebody that says that jelly juice doesn't work you ask them to prove to them prove to you that jelly juice doesn't work and if they never tried it then they have no they have no you know they have no reason to have any kind of opinion but if they tried jelly juice and they don't like it because they had this react you had they had this reaction to it then they just prove to you that jelly juice did work even though in their perception, their mind, jelly juice did not work. The whole point of jelly juice is to bring up your predispositions and deal with it. But people don't want to deal with their demons. They want to hide their demons. They want to face their demons on their deathbed when they're about to die. And I'm like, okay, that's your choice. But you say you want to live because you're taking chemotherapy, can cannabis, and all these different concoctions and remedies. And that is the misalignment of the body, mind, and spirit. When you say you want to live, but you're doing everything else that's going to say that you don't. You're bringing the wrong chemistry to say that you don't want to live. And then we have these debates. All right. So I've broken apart the English language to where if you understand what perception is, what between a perception and a fact, perception is where it, the, the, the one word, the one word characterizing a noun can be a noun, a verb, and an adjective. That is context, which means that's not, you're not dealing with fact. When a word can be categorized as an adjective, a verb, and a noun, because adjectives, verbs, and adjectives and verbs are qualifiers. A noun is a person, place, or thing, and that could be a fact, but it's only a fact if it can only be a noun. But if it can also be qualified as an adjective or a verb, then you're dealing with perception. You're not dealing with fact, which means that everybody's right. So when it comes to the vaccine debates, okay, and someone's saying that, oh yeah, vaccines are deadly. Well, you look at what characterizes what is the reason behind vaccines, and one word is protection or unprotected. When someone says that a vaccine protects you or unprotects you, then you're dealing with a word that's either a verb or a noun or an adjective or all three, and then you're dealing with context. Everybody's correct. No one's dealing with facts because they're all perceiving this protection, but there is no proof. How do you prove protection? And what is protection? Okay. What is protection? That you, that you don't get a disease? But that's the whole point of, of vaccines, is that you get some kind of upset of homeostasis to give you some antibodies. You're going to have a, a, an upset of homeostasis where you're going to feel, you know, the body morphing and adapting to that new environment. You're going to feel something. So that's by nature, the whole point of vaccine. So it's like in, even what is protection is under under scrutiny and debatable. So when everything, when anything is debatable, you're dealing with, with perceptions. And that's the, why this world is messed up. That's why this world is so messed up because you're dealing with everyone's perception. No one's dealing in facts. They use facts when it, when, when it, when it's convenient, but it's always still dressed up as some kind of perception. Okay. So facts are just, that's a chair. A fact is that's a vaccine. A fact is that's jelly juice. When you start characterizing it as a problem or a solution, that's when uh, where we get into this whole debate and conflict. So then, then it's understanding the science of what life is and then what death is, and that is that is why we have academia that's able to put out facts, but their perceived problems and solutions is the perceptions out there that are causing the disintegration process in people, places, and things. Okay, so. Th 
this is just another way of looking at uh, what life and death is in our society, what we have come to accept and why there is conflict. And we do have the ability to change the trajectory of humanity, but first it's penetrating your belief system. And once you penetrate your belief system that you don't have to die, that's the first step. Then it's finding all the evidence to support then the indefinite life process. And that is the ability to adapt on an exponential level. Okay, when somebody is not is not afflicted or dying or disintegrating from cancer disease and chronic illness, they are they have the ability to adapt and evolve. Evolve. When somebody is afflicted with cancer disease, chronic illness, and they have diagnosable diseases, they are disintegrating. They are dying. That is not life. That is dying because life is self-sustaining chemical systems capable of Darwinian evolution. Okay, and when you're not adapting to the environment and you're taking pills and drugs and, and remedies and detoxes, you are actually in the death process. You're not living. You're just waiting to die. And that is the antithesis of jelly juice. We are actually bringing forth a chemistry that is so completely life affirming that as soon as you drink it, you're going to feel your body wake up. And some people don't want to feel. They want to anesthetize. They want to drug. They want to escape. And at some point, you're going to have to face your demons at some point. And most people are going to feel, are going to be facing their demons on their deathbed. So the whole Julie juice is you face your demons while you're awake and you're alive and you're strong enough. But, uh, but if you don't want to do that, you're going to eventually have to pay the piper and face your demons on your deathbed. And that is what I'm trying to penetrate is that belief system that you have to die and that it's a someday thing when it really doesn't have to be. So that's why my book is out <clears throat> Right now, the um, I know I'm, it's early in the morning, so I'm like a little congested. Um, so anyway, that's why my book right now it went through the evolution because beginning you know of the evolution was in February when I changed from the pink salt to the white salt, and the the white salt really gets to the root of the matter very very quickly. It's not being laden down with all the heavy metals or the minerals, and uh, you will get your minerals in the tap water as well as in your food supply and then in the air that you breathe. So you don't need to have all these minerals in the salt. So the the jelly juice is has evolved from a holistic you know uh, mentality where they're all about the different specialty salts and all these different specialty organic this and that. We're not playing those games in the holistic world. We're getting straight to the root matter, which is a white salt which is the actual energizing force, which is what scares the hell out of people because it does energize and cause you to live. And some people don't want to live. So that's why they're afraid. Oh, I'm going to get you know, a heart attack or a stroke or high blood pressure. No, you already have predispositions. You've got to deal with your predispositions, but you must apply the right chemistry. So it's not just salt alone. It is also the probiotics and the nutrition that's in the cabbage and the kale and the water and then your regular you know, food supply. And then if you are overweight, you might want to lay back on or, and, and chill out on the sugar and the carbs, not completely cut them out altogether, and drink more of the jelly juice to melt off all that excess fat. And then if you are underweight, then you add, you eat more carbs and sugars because you need to gain weight. Or if you have trouble processing food, then you put in fruit syrup or any kind of syrupy substance in the jelly juice after it's been fermented so you can add calories to your body, mind, and spirit and gain weight because some of you have issues with gaining weight okay so jelly juice can work on both ends and i do talk about that in my evolution of the jelly juice protocol is the sugar and the salt and then the microbiome and then what life you know what life is or oh god the four seasons and life and death and reproduction and all that so i do i do go into a lot of different things um and uh it, it just gives you kind of a, a basis format to understand why jelly juice is important. And then this next book that I'm writing that's really dissecting the English language, that's going to give you the real how a jelly juicer on four years of jelly juice thinks. And you're seeing my thought process within the last like month that it's very it goes down to the micro level, understanding the connection to the macro level. Because that is the, the whole point of Jilly Juice is to connect all of the context. When you go to college, when you go to school, everything's all subject matters. And you don't see the relationship between math, English, and science, and social studies, and, and history. And so the, 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 the Jilly Juice is able to have you connect all of those subject matters together to see that, that they're not compartmentalized. 
that they don't that, that everything is connected. So if you're a plumber or a trucker or um, a lawyer or a doctor, you can see the connections of the body, mind, and spirit, as well as how it manifests in geopolitics. And then you'll understand why we have so much chaos in the world, because most people out there that are chaotic, they're out there in the streets fighting, have imbalances in their body, mind, and spirit. And so then all the subject matters that you taught were taught in school, they're finally melded into one subject matter, which is basically what life is and what death is. And then, then the compartmentalization is then the specialized things to then sell you into uh, a, a feeling of accomplishment, a credential, and also sell people a remedy that only will last a few years or so because you have the expectation to die. So, it, so Julie Juice has definitely some major, major qualities that uh, I don't even know what you're going to experience because you have unique experiences that I don't have. I mean, we're all unique in some way. We're not special, but we're all unique in some way as far as our experiences and our backgrounds. And we don't always say everything that we've experienced. So there are some things that you may, you may be a very public person, but there's always something that you've experienced that no one else has. And that contributes to your, to your overall perspective on anything. And so whatever it is that you come up with, okay, you know, as far as like an invention or, whatever your purpose is, once you stay on the jelly juice long enough, it's going to be unique. It's going to be amazing. Okay. But, but you have to do the JJ's to do it. There's no way to understand. There's no way to really see the potential of your biochemistry if you don't even change it. Okay. And so that's the beauty of JJ's. There's no way I could tell you or prove to you anything because something that you're going to have to experience yourself on your own within the privacy of your own home. And you don't have to do it publicly because healing is a private thing. It's not something that you really want to put out there unless you're okay with having people critique you and having an opinion and a judgment on your healing process. So I don't mind being that person. People in my group and they're on my page don't mind being those people to be that, that, that example of the potential of what, you know, you could, you could, I don't know of what you could experience and accomplish on J juice. I mean, when you have blinders that this is the only way, there's no way you can see the possibility of, of all of these things out there that we, we, we want to see in humanity. Okay. And so, but to change humanity and the change of course of everything and to understand why we need to move forward, not look back is you gotta, you gotta deal with your own personal demons. Because there are collective demons where people have shared experiences because they've been brainwashed by movies. There's nobody that's been around since the 1600s. Nobody's been around since the 1400s. There's nobody here that's been around, you know, really, um, there's a few people that have been around since, you know, World War II. But when you think about it right now, no one has been around since the 16, 14, 1500s. And so why we are dealing with things that happened way back when it's like somebody who's dealing with cancer disease and chronic illness and they've ignored it and they've ignored it. And, uh, and then um, it's never been resolved. And so how do you resolve something that happened way back when? Well, we start moving forward, changing the way in which we do things, not accepting certain behaviors, which I think that's what's going on right now and changing mentalities and agencies. And, and then uh, I don't know, finally it's like, you have to deal with the inflammation. You know, all of the riots and all of the, the, the protesting is like your body going through inflammation. It's like people are on the jelly juice out there. They're not on the jelly juice out there. They're rioting. But that's kind of an example. When you have protests and riots and societal upheaval is that the body is going through a revolution. It's trying to recalibrate because there definitely is something that is wrong in your body that needs to be fixed. And if you're not applying the right chemistry, you're going to have inflammation happen all the time. Okay, so that's the that so that's how you can connect the macro, the geopolitics to the micro, which is your body, mind, and spirit, and see how they're connected, and then realize that the only way for really for humanity to move forward is if each of us individually calibrate and balance out, recalibrate and balance out our body, mind, and spirit, and then we take ourselves out of the war because there is no war. The war is manufactured in here. The battles are in here. They're made up. The perceived problems are in here. They're not out there. But when people have a collective perceived problem in here, they get together and hang out. Okay? And that's inflammation. And so then and then, then we have all these different factions that are like fighting each other, but whatever. But that's more imbalanced people that haven't resolved their history that are in reactive mode. So 
that's a lot that I just said right now and, and like all in one breath. But, you know, I, I'm seeing as each day goes by and as I keep resolving all the, you know, the past issues in my life and I keep evolving, um, things become clearer. The, you know, writing my book, this next book has is, begin, is easier because my, my thoughts are organized. I'm able to really compartmentalize and then connect together. Because before you can connect everything together, you, you must compartmentalize and see things individually and then find the connections between everything. And so that's why I've been focusing on this, this, this in a piecemeal type of form. Because to study how the whole works, you have to understand how the components that make up the whole operate and and give honor to and respect okay because the the micro is definitely connected to the macro and they're all connected everything all points in between and that is the beauty of jilly juice is first dealing with the micro which is you so that way then the manifest into the macro which is your community and this is how we can better our communities when we better ourselves but it's not just being better in self-help it's actually changing your biochemistry and you take yourself out of the war understand between perception and fact and truth and truth and perception are two sides of the same coin fact is just a, a noun that cannot be an adjective or a verb and it really comes down to the english language how we speak what we say what we what we focus on and then you know uh our belief systems and there's a lot going on but it's it's it it'll get easier when you do the j juice to understand my organization of thought okay so that's it have a good day I'm going to work, you guys work too, and do the J-Juice. My book is out. It's only in paperback. And if you have a problem ordering the book, just, you know, go to the, the Lulu de help desk and put in a ticket and they'll help you out with that. But other than that, you know, the book is out. My Evolution of the J-Juice Protocol is out. If you want to join my group, just send me, you know, uh, an email. And it's all over my Facebook and everywhere else. And send me your profile of your Facebook. I'll friend request you. You can go into the group. And there you go. A place to share. Not to ask a billion questions. Not really ask any questions because you have the book. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory. And it's just sharing your experiences and getting support. Not somebody saying, okay, you're going to get guaranteed this, this, and that. No, it's just like, hey, I'm experiencing this. I'm sure all of you have. But if you have, great. Let me know how how it felt for you or whatever something to where you just want to feel like you're sharing an experience without asking somebody if they're going to experience this or what to do for it because there's no remedies in my group there's no remedies on jilly juice at all remedies is what caused us to be here in the first place you know once you do jilly juice you got to deal with your with your issues and you have a choice of all the remedies in the world that we don't need to be giving you any remedies jilly juice could be a remedy for some people because they have they have enough in their body to heal very quickly, but not everybody has that. And so I'm not using or saying that Jilly Juice should be remedy, but sometimes it can be because your your issues were not that deep rooted. So when you do Jilly Juice and you don't feel pain because you did Jilly Juice, it means that your issues weren't deep rooted. You earned that healing process. But some of you have such deep rooted issues that when you do Jilly Juice, yes, you're going to have to deal with your issues until you've earned the right not to. And that's the beauty of J Juice. Okay. So talk to you later. Bye.